Hey guys, it's Selvan here. Let's talk about survival today. Survival has been through quite a lot of changes coming over from Legion and finally plays as a fully fledged spec. It is primarily a melee DPS, sadly no dual wield yet, one can hope, but you're stuck on a two-hander, dealing damage up close and from afar from your poisons and bombs, and of course with your trusty companion pet. As for your general kit, hasn't changed in comparison to the, your range siblings, still bringing quite a lot of utility and CC, with the added bonus of being highly versatile and mobile melee. Now before we actually get to talk about your rotation, let's talk about your talents. So on tier 1, we now get Alpha Predator and Viper's Venom. Both of these are pretty equivalent DPS-wise, and I would say choose whichever you prefer. Alpha Predator will grant you two charges of kill commands to use, this being your main way to get some focus back during your rotation, and makes it to deal 30% more damage. This also allows you to better manage and maximize kill commands over the course of fights due to those set to charges. Viper's Venom in turn will give you a proc, making your Raptor Strike or Mongoose Bite, more on that in a bit, have a chance to make your next Serpent Sting free to use, saving you some focus and deal 250% more damage on its initial hit. So again, go for whichever you prefer or sim to know which is best for you. I find Viper's Venom easier to use and so is my recommended choice for beginners, as Alpha Predator can clutter you a little bit more, but can also be a little bit better. As for terms of engagement, it's only useful for open world stuff, uh, doesn't really work for PvE, though in theory can work for dungeons but I find it rather clunky. Second tier is AoE type of choices, Guerrilla Tactics will grant you wildfire bombs, two charges, and increase its initial damage by 100%. This tends to be the go-to for a single target at this point in time, mainly due to the last tier talent called Wildfire Infusion, making those two charges really quite valuable, more on that later. As for AoE or Mythic Plus, it's really amazing, also if you're craving for a burst. As for Hydra's Bite, it is really great also obviously only useful for mythic plus or cleave fights your serpent sting now affects two targets for a total of three and its dot damage is increased by 10 percent now if you're taking this you really need a viper's venom the combo of them is going to turn those procs into really amazing cleave damage working really well for mythic plus or cleaving fights again especially if the dungeon does not include very big trash packs and they live long enough for your serpent sting to tick bigger trash packs especially on teaming week grill attack tactics will take the cake. As for Butchery, it's really great also, replaces your Carve for on-demand burst AoE damage on 3 charges. Personally, I recommend taking Guerrilla Tactics anyway for burst AoE, especially since it's still really useful for single targets, so when you get to the bosses, Butchery is just gonna fall flat in those situations. Next, choose what you prefer, Natural Mending tends to be best for raiding and dungeons, with Camouflage having its niche, but working best in in PvP or open world. And the same follows for Trailblazer. On the next one, Bloodseeker is currently the king. A kill command now adds a bleed, plus you and your pets gain 10% attack speed for every bleeding enemy. Uh, simple and passive. The other choices are okay, like the crows and steel trap. They are also a dot, but add another button to click, cluttering your rotation for a little bonus. Next tier is once again optional. Post haste tends to be the best for extra mobility, although Born to be wild can be useful for more aspect cooldowns, like turtle for soaks and stuff, or of course, binding shot for a root, uh, not a stun, which I said on my BM guide, but still great for Mythic Plus. And on the tier 6, Tip of the Spear is going to improve your Raptor Strike ability, every kill command increases its damage by 20%, stacking 3 times. And this works nicely in AoE because you're not going to use it all that often, but you're still going to be using kill command for focus, so you'll be able to stack that buff easily to then put out bigger Raptor Strikes. In single target, works perfectly fine as well, one chain 
change your rotation at all, just gives you that extra damage. That said, Mongoose Bite can be better, so I only recommend Tip of the Spear if you really despise Mongoose Bite mechanics, since it will change your rotation by quite a bit. So Mongoose Bite still works much like the Legion version, it's gonna replace your Raptor Strike this time around, and each Mongoose Bite increases the damage of subsequent Mongoose Bites by 15%, stacking 5 times. So generally this will be something you will plan a little bit, in comparison to the simple filler use of Raptor Strike, to stack up that buff quickly and use it as much as you can because even though it stacks, the duration does not increase. So you have to make quick do of those same longest bites during that time frame. More on that later. A flanking strike uh, I didn't found all that useful is an ability deals pretty decent damage on a 40 second cooldown and grants you a 30 focus to you in your pet. Again, I never felt the need, but you can use it if you're craving focus for some reason, such as AoE in dungeons. And then on the last year, wildfire infusion will be the go-to to every situation, changing your wildfire bomb to have different effects like shrapnel, volatile and pheromone bombs, but more on that in your rotation. Birds of Prey isn't too bad to increase the duration of your coordinated assault, so your main CD, but only worth when you stack up a trait called Blur of Talents, which boosts it even more, but I recommend wildfire infusion anyway, more powerful and more fun also. Chakrams at this point in time aren't really worth to take, even Wildfire Infusion will be better in AoE situations or cleave. Now, like I did with BM, before we get to your rotation, let's talk a little bit about your pets. Your pets in survival does not take a huge role in comparison to BM, but still is your main way to manage focus due to kill commands, a certain CT like intimidation comes from your pet, and a decent percentage of your total damage still comes from it. So to help with all of this, there is some macros to set up to improve your pet AI because in general it's quite shit. So I will include down in the description a big macro to your kill commands. What you will do is 1. Make your pet use their main attack like claw or bite. The game does automatically for you but there's a slight delay. This makes sure they are maximized. The other is about controlling your pet a little bit better in a way to avoid to keep bind his attack because more often than not when you change targets your pet isn't as fast as you or when you change targets and quickly go for a kill command it takes a little bit to react or will use on the old target this makes sure it switches at your prompt making it far faster than the automatic system as a bonus i also set up kill commands to call your first pet from your list in case you forgot it for some reason so you're quite welcome i also provided one for intimidation as often the same problem as skill command arises, you change targets and quickly use it, uh, your pet is gonna stun the old target, which is not optimal, this will prevent that. And yet another for misdirection on mouse overs, so it's easier to use without changing targets, you just put your mouse over the targets that you want to use misdirection, click it, and it goes without changing the targets and wasting our time. As for pet choices, all of them do the same damage, alright, each family has its unique abilities, like wolves have a slow, raptors have a willing reduction, turtles have like a shield, so you can take advantage of them in niche situations. Check out Petopia website if you wish to learn all about pets, it's excellent to track and find out what pet you want. That said, they have their own dedicated specs like tenacity, cunning and ferocity. A ferocity offers a bloodlust and a leech buff, healing you per damage, tenacity and HP increase buff and damage reduction personal, and cunning movement speed increase and a slow slash root removal. Uh, my choice tends to go for ferocity but only if we need a bloodlust in the group. When there's no need I opt on for my tenacity pet of choice. The damage reduction and HP increase is amazing for content like raids and with shamans and mages your bloodlust is gonna go to waste so might as well go for the tenacity pet. Uh, cunning benefits is quite niche in PvE but remember there is such an ability that you can use. With all of that said and done, let's talk rotation and your priorities. As survival, you don't have a lot of CDs, but I'll still go over them after we go through the general idea of how to play survival. In terms of 
talents. I'm gonna cover all the different playstyles. Uh, firstly, starting with Alpha Predator, Guerrilla Tactics, Mongoose Smite, and of course, Wildfire Infusion, and then go over the others. And before we get to the bombs, specifically in your rotation on when to use them, since they have quite a high priority and involve most of your abilities, let's get the idea first of those same abilities like Mongoose Bites, Serpent Stings, and your Kill Command, and the general focus management. So your priority number one is of course your Serpent Sting. It's your main dot, something that you want to keep up and not let it drop. Next would be your bombs. I'll go over them in a bit, so we get to Mongo Spites. Uh, Mongo Spites are gonna be the main consume of focus and your highest damaging ability. Serpent Sting costs a little focus too, but it's not a lot and you only need to use it to maintain the dot. Mongo Spites, however, is something that you want to spam, but also have that tricky window where they increase in damage for a set duration. So the idea with them is that you want to build those stacks as fast as you can. Haste is something here that will obviously help a lot so you keep spamming at them, they will deal ever more damage with every Mongo Spite. Then you're gonna notice that your focus is dropping. This is when your kill command is gonna come in, so you can keep on those Mongo Spites. Kill command sends your pets to attack, dealing some damage and granting you 15 focus. With Alpha Predator, with two charges, it gives the benefit to use one and bang the other while the cooldown ticks. The general idea with them is that you only want to use them when you know for sure you want overcap focus. But with Alpha Predator, you want to make sure you keep that cooldown rolling to maximize its uses. That said, it can get a bit hectic since Kill Command can reset its own cooldown. Uh, when that happens, not much changes, you only use it again if you're not gonna overcap focus. Think of Kill Command just as that, to get focus back, not as a damaging ability per se. Once you have some focus back, you can go back to those Mongo Spites. Now, when you get to the five stacks, it deals the most damage. So here it jumps in priority a bit, you want to use them as available. Forget Kill Command's management, just use them in such a way that it gives focus for Mongo Spites and that's it. For Serpent Sting during this time, aim to refresh it right as it's about to fall off. That's the main idea with Mongo Spites. You always want to try to reach the 5 stacks, even if you cannot cast many during that time. You want to always aim for the 5, so plan around your abilities and focus to reach that point with every Mongo Spite window. Now, when they drop, you don't want to start another straight after. They are much more forgiving than Legion, so the only thing to keep in mind when you start your Mongo Spite phase is to have at least 60 plus focus, right? This will ensure 2 or 3 bites when you start up again. Now, as for the bombs, as I said, they have quite a high priority after Serpent Sting and before Mongo Spites. To make it simple, I'm just gonna refer to all the different bombs as colors, blue, red and green. Basically what they will do is for the duration of the dot, various effects will happen. These effects will of course influence some of your priorities, not by a lot, but something to keep in mind. Anytime you use a bomb, your next one is randomized, so you really need to get some weak auras to track those set bombs, so you know before you use it which color you're gonna get to act accordingly. If you want mine, check down below in the description as well. So if they are at two charges or are about to be, you want that cooldown rolling at all times so no matter what bomb you get use it in such circumstances so as for blue try to aim it before you enter your mongo spite window such as this example right now or when you know you're gonna spam at least three of them the same follows for raptor strike because the window of it is rather small and you want to make sure you will always reach the three stacks of that bleed effect. As for the green, you want to try and only use it during the time you would refresh Serpent Sting anyway. This will ensure a higher uptime and saving you a global cooldown and focus since bombs are free of them with of course the added damage bonus. For the red, it will reset Kill Command City all the time. So if you can, you want to try and use it when low on focus. You never want to stand there and spam it at max focus just because it's constantly resetting, remember what I just said above about resource management. But it's an excellent way to get a lot of focus back. If you happen to have it during a time of high focus because of bomb charges, just use kill commands as you would normally. In general, these rules are easy to follow, but mix that with all of your other priorities of managing focus, Mongo Spite Windows, Serpent Sting, the fight itself, 
can get a little bit hectic, so try to always plan ahead. You can clearly see what is your bomb effect, so plan accordingly to keep everything going smoothly in terms of cooldowns and the buffs that you're gonna get and maximize all of those effects. Now, if you're using other different talent sets uh, like Viper's Venom, not much changes. You get the proc and use it. This will take quite a high priority, but not above bombs, because remember that proc comes from either Mongo Spite or Raptor Strike. So you can get a proc, use a bomb, use a kill command if you need, and then you can use a proc. As long as you get the proc and don't use a raptor strike or bite, you're gonna be fine. This is due to not much the set proc, so overriding it. And if with tip of the spear, your rotation gets far easier to manage. With this, it's only about managing your dots and managing your bombs, like I said previously, and your focus. Raptor strike is just to use when nothing to click. As for tip of the spear buff, don't pay much attention to it. Don't be spamming kill commands to stack it if it means overcapping focus. Uh, think of it as a passive thing in the background, and that's it. Uh, this uh, though makes the red bomb quite good when low on focus, ensuring you, you get those three stacks for a bigger raptor strike. And yeah, now to talk about opener and when to use your CDs, or well, CD. So your main cooldown is coordinated assault, basically bestial wrath, let's be honest. Increasing damage plus a higher chance on kill command resets, but nothing will change on your rotation. You still only want to use them to get focus back. So for your opener, the idea will be to pop it right when the pull is about to happen due to the global cooldown. To get to the boss quickly, you can use your harpoon. I believe there's even a trait that mandates that you use so for agility. And then you go for a serpent sting. You can even use it while you jump with your harpoon, looking pretty cool in the process. When you get there, you're just gonna use your bomb, no matter the effect, because they are at two charges. And then you enter your mongoose spite window, exactly the same as before. Build that up quickly, using kill commands appropriately, and etc. In terms of using coordinated assaults after, so mid fight, just use it on cooldown, all right? To try to aim it before Mongo Spite Windows, which is when you're going to do the most damage, and of course, when you see that you're going to take full advantage of it, so in terms of fight mechanics. Aspect of the Ego is not a DPS cooldown in the same sense of the word, but is an amazing cooldown to allow for 40 yard range Mongo Spites or Raptor Strikes. It looks really cool, and you should use whenever you are far from the target or cannot hit it. As for AoE, uh, this is where survival can get a little bit hectic, because there's a lot of buttons to click and abilities to track and manage. Your priorities here won't change much. Your Serpent Sting you want to try and apply on all targets, but only if they will live long enough to get that tick going. Hydras will help tremendously here, but if they are short-lived, don't bother with it, unless you're with Viper's Venom for that initial uh, damage, then it gets quite bursty. But if not, jump to your other priorities, which will be your bombs. Now, your bombs will deal quite a lot of damage, but your Carve will also reduce their cooldown. So the main difference here in AoE is that you want to use Carve on cooldown when bombs are also on cooldown when you have at least two or more targets. Carve is going to reduce the bomb CD by one second per target hit, up to five seconds, so you want to maximize it using it on cooldown. It costs quite a lot of focus, that together with Serpent Sting Multidot will make you starve of resources, so you're going to have to use it a lot of kill commands, so try to wave them in whenever you want overcap focus, because you're going to need it at some point. Mongo Bite or Raptor Strike is the least priority to here, only use when nothing to click. Uh, there is a trait, a latent poison, which can increase its damage by each serpent sting ticks, making it a little bit more important to then consume those stacks with the raptor strike or bite on those same targets. So yeah, quite hectic, but focus on those bombs, okay? Focus on using carve on cooldown for more bombs, spread your stings if the mobs actually live for a decent amount of time, that's where most of your AoE damage is gonna lie. If with Butchery is easier to use, and so will be with Viper's Venom with Hydra, because you're gonna get these easy procs for really nice cleave damage, so again use them on cooldown in case of Butchery, or on the proc in the case of Hydra's with Viper's Venom. And yeah, that covers it all. As for stats, here Haste is gonna be quite valuable, but so of course will Agility, so 
top item level. Usually it's king, but haste is something that you really, really need. After that, it will be crits with verse and mastery a little bit on the weak side, but as everything stat wise, remember to sim. In terms of traits, you can see in the background what's currently best, but traits are often changed around and updated, so check the sources down below to track what are your best traits at any point in time. And as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to get more videos like this and check out my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. Have a fantastic day everyone and I'll see you all next time. See ya!